Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salamu ala rasulillah. So it's been a long time since I've done a live video here on Facebook, but I figured it's probably going to be one of the ways to get it out to people quickly. Since a lot of people are on Facebook, a lot of people are spending time online nowadays. So today on Twitter, I posted, uh, I made a post, I put a copy of it here on Facebook page. Um, where I talked about faith-based medicine versus fake-based medicine. People are spreading absolute inanity, foolishness, ridiculous claims about how to prevent the coronavirus. Uh, everything from the coronavirus is uh, predicted in the Quran to... Uh, if you find a hair in Surah Al-Baqarah inside your Mus'haf, put it in water and drink it and you're somehow going to be cured. Absolute stupidity. Okay, there's no other way to say it. There's no way to be nice about it. This form of folk, uh, superstitious Islam is very dangerous. It is very harmful. And it is very irresponsible on the part of anyone who spreads it. What's the difference between faith-based medicine and this fake anecdotal folk medicine? The difference is when we say, oh, our Islam informs us that we should prevent harm. The Prophet said, there should be no harm, we're reciprocating harm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Do not throw your hands into destruction. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not kill yourselves. And yes, these verses were revealed about specific things. لَكِنَ الْعِبْرَةُ بِعُمُومِ الْلَفْضِ لَا بِخُصُوصِ السَّبَبِ Consideration is given to the generality of the meaning, not to the specific reason it was revealed. So when God says, don't kill yourself, He says, don't throw your hands into destruction. The Prophet ﷺ says, لا ضرر ولا ضرار. No harm, no reciprocating harm. He says, لا يريد أن ممرض على مصح. Someone who is ill should not go to someone who is healthy. All of these things teach us substantively that there are preventative measures that we should take in, in guaranteeing our health and the health of others. Does that deny that there are spiritual forms of cure? No. The Prophet ﷺ told us about the curing nature of Al-Fatiha. But doing so is an act of faith and an act of devotion. And it's not subject to the type of ridiculous claims that people make today about uh, Surah Al-Muddathir uh, predicting the coronavirus and for God forbid finding somebody's eyelash inside of a Mus'haf. How disgusting. So, you might be saying, well, the, 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 the people of the past, they, they didn't do any of this, and, and you know, they, they continued living their lives as Muslims, and therefore we're, we're going we're gonna to show this coronavirus, we're going to go out there, and we're going you know, we're going to, we're going to show them who's boss, we're going to show this virus who's boss, we're going we're gonna to defy this because our faith is greater than this virus. First of all, the Prophet ﷺ said, a hadith narrated by the Bukhari in his Sahih from Aisha and I mentioned it last Friday in the khutbah. Again, a khutbah that was made to three other people fulfilling the basic conditions of Jummah and everyone standing six feet apart while we prayed, but so that we could get the reminder out there to the people about this. It's called Being Alone with Allah. You'll find it on my Facebook page and on YouTube. But the Prophet ﷺ, she, Aisha asked the Prophet ﷺ about, about epidemics. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّمَا هُوَ عَذَابٌ يَبْعَثُهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ فَيَجْعَلُهُ رَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ This is only an, a punishment that Allah will send upon some of His servants and make it a mercy for the believers. وَمَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ 
يجلس يجلس وقع عنده الوباء فيجلس في بيته صابرا محتسبا الا كان له اجر شيء صابرا محتسبا عالما الا يصيبه الا ما كتب الله له الا كان له اجر الشهيد او مثل اجر الشهيد never is a person in it does an epidemic occur in someone's area and he sits in his home with patience and taking account for his reward knowing that nothing will afflict him except what Allah has destined for him except that he will have the equal the, uh, the equal of the reward of a martyr even if he doesn't die why do I mention this? because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned specifically sitting in your home now, a friend of mine today, he sent me an ather from uh, mentioned al Bidayah wa Nihaya. Uh, when Ta'un uh, Amwas, when the uh, the plague of, uh, I think in English they call it Emmaus, E M M A U S, Amwas, the plague of Amwas, when it uh, hit Syria, a number of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, died, amongst them leadership. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, uh, Yazid ibn Abi Sufyan, uh, who else? Um, uh, Abu Ubaidah, عنه, after them, Amr ibn al As was made a governor. And when he assumed the leadership, he came and he gave a khutbah to the people. And he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna hadha al waj' la yashta'idu fikum ishti'al al nar. He said, this pain that has come to you spreads amongst you like fire burns up, like fire ignites. So there, therefore, you should, uh, he said, so therefore, فَتَفَرَّقُوا وَفَرُّوا وَتَحَصَّنُوا مِنْهُ فِي الْجِبَالِ So then disperse and hide from it in the mountains. So a man, um, I think it was, I think it mentions Abu Wa'id al Hudri. He said, "لَقَدْ صَحَبْتَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَأَنْتَ وَأَنْتَ أَشَرَّ مِنْ حِمَارِ هَذَا." He said, "You've, you've, uh, you, ha you have, you uh, have uh, accompanied the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, but you are worse than this donkey of mine." So he, رضي الله عنه, he said. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't respond to what you have to say. But we can't stay in the situation that we're in. He then left. And the people split up, staying in their homes, going, in, going into the mountains, dispersing and not interacting. And then the plague subsided. This reached Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu fama kariho. This reached Umar ibn Khattab and he did not dislike it. Meaning he, he, he thought this was something which was good. So the idea of social dis distancing, of taking into consideration precautionary measures to stop the spread of disease is something that is imperative to follow when it is based upon evidence and the recommendation of healthcare authorities, of health regulators, health you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, health regulators, the, the the health authorities, whatever you want to call them. True, Amr ibn As at that time was making a judgment call based on the anecdote that he knew what was effective, and that's an acceptable use of anecdote when you've already seen thousands of people die, and you know that if I just stay alone, I'm not going to. But when you have empirical evidence that what you are doing causes the spread of disease, then it becomes obligatory for you not to do so. How do we know this? We know this because of all of, again, the substantive principles of Islam about hygiene. The Prophet ﷺ, نَهَا أَنْ يَبُولَ الرَّجُلُ فِي مَغْصِدِهِ the Prophet ﷺ forbade a person to urinate in the place where he takes a shower or a bath, where he takes a bath. You can find this hadith in a Tirmidhi, long bath. 
Why is this important? This is important in the ulama, actually Tirmidhi mentions this in his Sunan. He says, this is important because when you urinate in the place where you take a bath, you are naturally going to expose yourself to filth. And therefore you're going to do what? You are going to increase, he's not saying this, I'm saying this, you're going to increase the, uh, the, the probability of getting sick. So, my point being is here, here is that let's be rational. Let's be thoughtful and let's be considerate and let's take the precautions necessary to slow down disease, to stop harm, and to support those in need. All right, so I want to